Hi, and welcome to another Power BI Monthly Digest. We actually took a month off. There were no updates in the month of January in 2020. And as you notice, I'm here by myself. Usually I'm doing this with one of my colleagues, but everybody is super busy right now because we love teaching everybody about Power BI, so it's got us on the road quite a bit right now. So in this month's Power BI Monthly Digest, the month of February 2020, we're going to be looking at a few of the updates that were released just with myself. Again, my name is Devin Knight, and we're going to hop right into it. The first thing that I want to show you that's new in this month's release of the Power BI desktop is going to be that incremental refresh, which we first talked about as a preview feature back in May of 2018. So it's really been quite some time. It was first released as a preview feature back in 2018 of May, and now it's been updated so that it's not just for premium users, which is a huge deal. So when Incremental Refresh was first released, you could only use it if you were a premium user. Now that's been expanded to pro users as well, which is a major, major feature request by a lot of folks that were interested in this feature. Now anybody can do it as long as they have a pro license. Now real briefly, if you're not too familiar with what the concept of Incremental Refresh is, let's say you're working with 10 years worth of data, and that 10 years worth of data could be millions, if not even billions of rows worth of data. The way Power BI works, whenever you go to refresh that data set, it wipes and reloads all of that data every single time. So you could be reloading billions of rows multiple times a day, potentially, and nothing's really changed with those rows because they're years old. So what incremental refresh allows you to do is rather than refreshing a full data set that's 10 years worth, that could be billions of rows, Instead, you can actually set it up so that your refresh only occurs on a segment of that data. So you can point it to a column, a date column, for instance, and say that I only want to refresh rows that happened within the last month's worth. Or you could even say that you want to detect changes on that last month's worth of data. And if there are changes, then reload them or update them. If there weren't changes, then go ahead and leave it as is. So enough talking, let's take a look at this feature. Again, it's been out for a little bit, but now we're gonna see that it does not have any premium limitations. So let's take a peek. All right, so I have a fairly simple Power BI desktop solution up here. You can see it has a couple uh, visuals on here, a slicer, a bar chart, and a map. And I have already implemented the incremental refresh capabilities into this, but I wanna walk you through it in case this is the first time you're seeing it because you didn't think it was something you could do until now. So if you wanted to implement incremental refresh, you would start by creating some parameters in the query editor here. So I'm going to go to the query editor. And inside the query editor, you can create parameters here. And traditionally, what you're doing is you're going to create kind of a range of dates that you can go from with inside of the filter capabilities. So I can go to uh, edit or manage parameters here, you can create some new parameters on your own. And I've created a range start and a range end parameter here that I can then use for my incremental refresh capabilities. And the way that I'm going to leverage these is on the column, the date column that I have inside this data set, this one here called closing date, you'll notice I have a filter on here. And if you look at the filter section on that, you'll see that I have a filter that's leveraging those parameters. So I have a saying everything that's before the range start and everything, uh, sorry, everything that's after the range start and everything that's before the range end is how my parameters are going to be leveraged. Then, the other thing that's kind of important if you want to work with incremental refresh is that you have some kind of updated date column or like a uh, built-in column that gives you context on when a row has been updated. This will be helpful when you're trying to detect changes in your data and you don't necessarily want to refresh uh, a ton of data. There's an option that we're going to look at there where you can detect changes based on an updated row uh, column. And so we'll see that here in a few moments. But you create a couple parameters. You then lock that parameter into a filter of your field. So I have a between filter here. One's already been applied, so I'm not gonna do it a second time, but you would select from the parameter list here and say range start and say range end. Mine's already done, so I'm gonna hit cancel here. And then on the actual table itself, when you're back in the report view here, there is an option when you right click on it to tell it that you want to set up incremental refresh. Now, when you select this, previously you would see a little diamond icon appear next to incremental refresh indicating that it was a premium only feature, but no more. You as a pro user can actually leverage and use incremental refresh. Now I've kind of purposely made a little bit of a mistake here because I wanted you to see this little warning message that pops up. I am connecting to a CSV file as my data source, 
but traditionally incremental refreshes will be done against data sources that query folding can be uh, able to leverage or query folding can be implemented in. If you're not too familiar with query folding, essentially that means that Power BI will take whatever filters and uh, things that you apply in the data transform steps and convert it into the native SQL language or the native language of whatever your data source is. Well, if I'm using a CSV file, that's not possible. So it's a you know kind of defeats the purpose of doing incremental refresh if you're connecting to a CSV file because it can't quite do everything you would anticipate. But um, you can, for demo purposes, still can take a peek at it. Normally, you won't see this yellow box up top. What you will see, however, is you can select the table that you want to implement incremental refresh on. You would turn it on. You would tell it how many years of data do you want to store based on the closing date column. So if I want to store the last five years worth, then I can say, go ahead and pull back the last five years worth. And as you know, the time goes on and we get to year six, it's going to automatically roll off any years prior to five. So that's what you're setting here is how many years do you want to continually have in your data set? Then underneath refresh rows where column closing date is in the last one month, what this is saying is even though we're keeping five years worth of data, I want you to constantly go back and look within the last month to see if there's any changes in the data that we want to go ahead and update. So basically, it's reloading the last month's worth of data with this setting. This is storing the last five years, but because everything doesn't really change beyond one month, only changes are allowed within a month, I'm only refreshing the data within that one month. And if you don't have this option turned on, this detect data changes, it's basically going to wipe and reload the entire one month. With the detect data changes turned on, what this will allow you to do is within that one month, try and find rows that have updates. So you'll see here it's looking at that column that we had called updated date, and it's just seeing if any changes have occurred on those rows within the date specified in the updated date column. So it's another layer of basically updates that you can do. It's making your window of updates even a little smaller to just the things you actually need. Whereas if I had this turned off, it would wipe and reload everything from just the past month, even though we're storing five years. Turning on detect data changes doesn't wipe and reload the whole thing. It just looks for updated dates that are more current than the previous load. OK, so that's kind of a good way to think about it as you're looking at some of these things. But once you do that, you're all set to go. You have your incremental refresh set to go. I have already done that. I didn't make any changes, so there's nothing to apply. And as you deploy this out, your incremental refresh will have the very first load will be kind of a longer one because it has to load in the entire data set. But any su subsequent load will then be much smaller as you're pulling in just the latest rows of data. OK, cool. So really cool feature there, incremental refresh, something that's been around for a little bit, but now it's expanded beyond just premium users to pro users as well. You can thank the product team at Power BI because that was one of the most frequently requested features is now coming now available to you. Huge news there. The next thing that we're going to look at is on the data visualization side of things, and specifically around the data visualization for filtering data called a slicer. So many of you have likely worked with slicers before, but there's been a change to the slicer capabilities that you have inside Power BI that you're now allowed to have hierarchical gate data inside of your slicer. Previously, if you wanted to have a hierarchy slicer, there was a custom visual that someone developed that you could go find on the custom visual gallery. And you can bring that in, and it would allow you to filter your data through a hierarchy, where you could drill into one level and go deeper into that level and filter at multiple levels. That was such a hot custom visual, one of the more popular custom visuals, that the Power BI team has wrapped that capability into the native slicer that you have and you've used for so long. So very simple idea. You can now have hierarchies in your slicer. Let's take a look and get you a picture at what this looks like. I think you're going to like it. All right, as you can see, again, I have a slicer already set up on this report. What I'm going to do is select that slicer and then add to it. Right now, I only have the field state, but I'm going to add to it the city below it, making it into a bit of a hierarchy here. Now, you could also bring in the hierarchy that's already developed. If you built out your own hierarchy, you can do that. Or if you just drag a uh, subordinate field underneath here, you'll see that capability as well. So now I have the new slicer capabilities allows me to drill into specific states and see the cities within the state that I want to filter. And so I can start to select each one of these if I wanted to here. And based on my selection, it allows me to select multiple values within that state. If I wanted to select the entire state, of course, you can do that as well. And it'll select everything in that state. Or if I just wanted to pick individual cities, you can do that as well. So neat capabilities that you have built in with the slicer now. So it makes it much easier to be able to select multiple values, it makes it much easier to make your life easier when it comes to filtering data.
All right, let's flip back. I got one more thing to talk about that we have a demo around. And this next item is all around key tips. So if you're not really too familiar with key tips, this is an accessibility feature that allows you to easily maneuver around uh, a menu to make it so that you can find things just using uh, hotkeys within your keyboard to be able to navigate. This is a very quick one to show that they've added now to the new ribbon that again is in preview right now, but it's a new feature that I wanna give you a quick peek at. Let's go hop back over to our demo and take a look again. All right, so very simple one to show here. If you wanna be able to see the key tips to be able to make it easy for you to use hotkeys to navigate around the environment here, all you have to do is hit Alt Windows and you'll see those key tips pop up there. Those key tips give you the ability to easily navigate around the menu. So if I hit I, for instance, that'll take me over to the insert menu. If I hit E, for example, that will launch open a text box on my screen, just making things easier and also making it so that those that have accessibility needs can more easily interact with the tool. And they've been working a lot on those uh, needs within inside of Power BI to make it just easier to navigate around. But again, all it is is Alt Windows. And when you do that, it pops up to take you back to where you were here. All right, let's head back over and talk about a few other items. All right, next we're gonna talk about some new DAX functions that have been added into Power BI this month. We have first non-blank value and a last non-blank value. Now you may be familiar that there's already a couple DAX functions called first non-blank and last non-blank. The big difference with these new DAX functions have to do with the functionality where you can do this against measures now. So it's making it where you can actually bring back the first non-null measure value or the last non-null measure value. So that's kind of what these do for you. It makes it easy to bring back those first non-null or non-blank values inside of Power BI. That has to do more with your measures here in this case. Then lastly, that I want to talk about a little bit is the data connectivity features that have been added. There's going to be a few data connectors added into Power BI this month. I'm going to mention a couple of them that are particularly interesting that you might be uh, interested in. One of them is a MicroStrategies connector that's gotten added. This, of course, is MicroStrategies, if you're familiar with this, is a bit of a competitor tool for Microsoft data visualization tools like reporting services. But now you're going to have the ability to actually connect into MicroStrategies and use it as a data source. So that's a great new add. And also, in addition, is TIBCO. So TIBCO is a company that makes Spotfire, a pretty big competitor of Power BI. There's now a data connector built in for TIBCO for you to be able to pull in your data from there as well. So some interesting data connectors that are being added uh, this month. But other than that, that's pretty much it. A couple big ones there. The biggest feature obviously is incremental refresh for those pro users. You also saw the hierarchy slicer and then some of those data connectors and DAX functionality that's been released. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. Let us know what were some of the more interesting things that you liked from this month's release. You can comment below and let us know. Next month, I'll be back with another colleague here. We'll be able to talk more about the update that we have in March. But for this month, of course, February 2020, we look forward to testing out some of these new features. And of course, if you're looking to go more in depth than what we're able to cover in these short videos, check out our training at pragmaticworks.com. Thank you so much.